آت عمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له شهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له هو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم وشهد أن حبيبنا ومولانا وسيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله أرسله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters we start as we always start by praising Allah thanking Allah for all of the gifts bounties blessings that he has bestowed upon us we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the gift of health and wealth and family and most and and last of all but most importantly iman for making us believers and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his peace and blessings upon our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and i remind myself first as well as all of you to have consciousness to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times uh, dear brothers and sisters, before we start into the main khutbah, uh, the main topic of the khutbah, I wanted to briefly address uh, what we've seen take place in front of our eyes in the blessed Masjid Al-Aqsa. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has made certain places on this earth holy and sanctified, blessed. And this is one of those places. And this is uh, a, a, a area of land, a piece of land that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has made a place where all of the prophets or many of the prophets, if not most of the prophets have called their home and have had, have left their footprint and impact and of course this is a place that is sanctified to not only us as Muslims but also Jews as Christians unfortunately as we know there is a, a, an oppressive regime that is trying to usurp, trying to strip the rights of Muslims to worship in the house of Allah, Masjid Al-Aqsa, with full freedom. And alhamdulillah, we saw in these last couple of weeks where actually the masjid was closed, access was completely restricted or severely restricted. And then they put a metal detectors and all of these other uh, barriers for the Muslims to get in. The Muslims protested and they said, no, this is the house of Allah. We are free to go in and out as we please. And alhamdulillah, by their protest and by their raising their voice and by their being united, the people of Palestine have upheld that wall for us the whole ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the people there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them freedom and may He grant them uh, um, uh, to, be, to, to be able to come out of this oppressive state that they're in. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all to be able to visit this beautiful house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, um, it's summertime and um, in the summertime it's hot and in the summertime we see certain things that we don't see at other times of the year. We see certain things that we don't see at other times of the year and um, I just came back actually from a trip from Florida where it's even hotter. And there are certain things there that subhanAllah you, you see and, and we realize how beautiful and how important our deen in the sense and the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us parameters by which to live by. And, and what I mean by that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the virtue of lowering the gaze, of not allowing everything that's out in the world to be able to enter into our minds. And the fact that this is one of the, it's a fact that this is one of the most neglected virtues that even we as Muslims hold on to today. We live in an age when it's very difficult to practice this very important Islamic value. And we, and when this, when this particular Fadila, this particular virtue is not practiced, it leads to much fitna and corruption and, uh, uh, and evil in this world. And because we neglect this great virtue, 
we find young people and old involved in things that subhanAllah previously we didn't think imaginable. Uh, we, we see young and old, unfortunately, because this is the starting point. People that committing zina, people that are watching things that we couldn't imagine previously, talking about pornography, and people who are involved in all sorts of different types of sexual perversions. And I'm sorry I have to be a little bit explicit about some of the language to make it very clear what we're talking about. And the reason for this starts with this, starts with we don't pay attention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandment in the way in which we should. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ ذَلِكَ أَزْكَالَهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا يَصْنَعُونَ Say, Allah tells Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say to the believers, to the believing men in this part of the ayah, that they should lower their gaze and they should guard their private parts. That is more pure for them. Allah is aware of all that you do. Allah is aware that of all that we do. And of course the next ayah continues, وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْدُدْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنْ وَيَحْفُضُ فُرُوجَهُمْ and the ayah continues that and say to the believing women the same thing that they should guard that they should lower their gaze and guard their chastity and guard their private parts we live in a society that when you know everything that you see around you is prompting you to look everything that we see in the world of marketing in the world of advertising of advertising is trying to get our eyes to go a certain direction. And in a society where morals are not important, they will take our eyesight to what they want us to see by any means necessary, right? By any way which possible they can do. And so everything is pushing us, encouraging us to look. And they even say that, you know, it's fine if you look, but just don't touch. Right? As if there is some sort of distinction. For us as Muslims, there's no distinction. They think this is some sort of middle ground. It's fine if you do this, but not this. Don't go too far. No, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He set up a system for us where we're protected from the beginning. Where we're protected from the beginning. And that's why the Islamic principle says that man ad, ma adda ila haram fa huwa haram. You know, something that leads to a haram, anything that takes you down that path also becomes haram. So the ultimate, that will t the ultimate uh, perversion would be zina, to somebody to go down that road. But anything that takes you down that path is also something that's to be avoided and also something that's forbidden in Islam. So how do we live in a world when we see all of this around us? Right? It's, it's a fact. It's a fact. Anything you, anything, you, anything you do, anywhere you go, and unfortunately now all of us have devices in our hands, in our pockets all of the time, where almost anything you open, all of these images are, are you know, come up. So how do we act and what do we do? Um, before we get into that, unfortunately it must be said that many Muslim mothers and fathers Sometimes with good intention, but a wrong methodology, we want to entertain our families. Right? We want to provide entertainment to our children, take them out to a movie, let them uh, watch certain things on Netflix or whatever it is, so that they may be entertained. And sometimes, we, and sometimes it's done as a family even. And it's done as an excuse to do something together. But the reality is that in much of what we see today, there is images that are very harmful. Very harmful to our spiritual selves. And we'll talk about that inshallah in a little bit. Um, images, sexual dialogues, innuendos that we allow ourselves and our children to ingest with their eyes and ears. 
And some people, they, they brush it off and they think, oh, these are just images, these are not real people, these are not real things, and what's, what's the harm? So what? The Prophet ﷺ, he gave us a method by which to deal with this. And subhanAllah, this is very interesting. You know, we live in a time when we feel that it's all around us. Uh, in the summer, it's a time when we, you know, people go to the beach, people swim, people do all these activities. But of course, as Muslims, we have to be very conscious how and where and when we do those things. Um, this is a world where we see it all around us. The Prophet ﷺ, he gave us the key 14 plus hundred years ago. In a society that was very conservative, very uh, modest in relative terms to ours, I mean extremely uh, uh, compared to ours, the relative nature of the morals and that society compared today completely different. But yet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, from his ultimate wisdom, he, he taught his companions who taught the next generation until it's passed down to us as to how do we deal with this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, his advice in this matter. One time Sayyidina uh, Jabir radiallahu anhu, he tells us that سألت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن النظر الفجاءة أو النظر الفجاءة. He says that I asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم about you know what 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 is my how am I accountable if I see something inadvertently, accidentally, right? My eyes go to something, some image. And typically, we're talking about somebody from the opposite gender um, and, and seeing somebody who is not clothed in the, in the limits that are prescribed by Sharia. What am I supposed to do? The Prophet ﷺ, very simple. It's very simple. He ordered me to divert my gaze. You see something, look down, look away. That's the prophetic advice back then and that still holds uh, true today. The Prophet ﷺ, he's one time with his uh, cousin, young cousin, Al-Fadl ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum, radiallahu anhuma. Uh, Al-Fadl, he saw a young lady that attracted his attention. So his gaze turns towards her. The Prophet ﷺ, he takes his chin and he moves his face like that. And he does it a couple of times. Right, so he told us, he taught us, when you see something that you shouldn't see or when something engages you and attracts you, simply turn yourself away. Right? I mean, obviously that today it has big, bigger implications. We have to take more steps by which to perform that. Sometimes people try to take a simple methodology but without realizing that you're opening the door altogether. What I mean is that if the movie says rated R, and it says that there's images of this, this, and this, you don't go to begin with. It's not a matter of, well, I'll go and then I'll look down at those particular points. That's not the way it works. We don't step into that so to be able to be exposed to it from the beginning. But when it does happen, by chance, that's what Rasulullah is talking about. But we don't put ourselves in those situations. When, when Zuma Beach at 12 noon on Saturday is loaded, with hundreds of people who basically shed all of their clothes, we don't go to the beach at that time. It's not a place for us to go to and then we'll say, well, I'm going to lower my... There's no such thing, it's everywhere. So we have to be very... We have to understand in the way in which we use this methodology. Right? It has to be implemented correctly and in its proper place so that we will protect ourselves. One time... Uh, and by the way, you know, the Sahaba, they were human beings. They had desires, they had lusts, they had wants. They were no different from us in that sense. They were more conscious of Allah, they had the greatest teacher with them all of the time, but their, their essence was the same as us. They were curious and they were attracted to what's beautiful and they had temptation. Um, yet they sought the Prophet Wasallam's guidance in controlling their desires, and we do the same. We have to do the same, but we don't just let those desires take control of us. And by the way, you know, in the, in, uh, in the past, I would feel hesitant about talking to the subject to a large audience, because some people feel that, well, maybe it only applies to young people and, um, and their reality in school. But no, it applies to all of us and everything that we do. 
and especially in the sense in, in the because of the fact of the way in which the ent entertainment industry works today. Right? Everybody watches some sort of entertainment and everybody has the ability to slowly slip and slowly justify to themselves the fact that they want to watch more and more and things that are, uh, that are un inappropriate. So the Prophet ﷺ, they went to him to learn how to control their desires. And this is very important um, uh, uh, you know, principle to know, that to possess sensual passions is a human quality. To possess sensual passions that are going to, if you follow them, take you down the wrong way, it is human. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He planted that inside of us. But to resist them, that is being Muslim. Let me say it again. To possess sensual passions and desires is a human quality. But to resist them, that is the quality of the believer, right? And that's what distinguishes us from others. The Prophet ﷺ, again, simple advice he gave to his companions. One time he told Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, he said, Ya Ali, la tutbi' al-nadrata al uh, la tutbi' al-nadrata al-nadra fa inna laka al-ula wa laysat laka al-akhira He says, don't follow one look with another. The first one is fine. You saw it by accident, by chance, no problem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not account, take you to account for that which you didn't have control of. But don't look again, right? Don't be persistent in what, in, 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 in looking in the wrong direction. So, as fathers, as mothers, as individuals ourselves, first we have to teach ourselves, as I'm talking to the adults in the room, how do we regulate what we allow our system to ingest, our eyes to see. And it's very important that we master that ourselves, because if we don't master it ourselves, then we pass it on to the next generation. And they have no, they have no barriers, they have no system, they have no method by which to avoid that which, which is wrong. Because society all, the, all around them is telling them to look, indulge, go, enjoy. But for us, we have to master ourselves and our own uh, um, ways in which we work in this world. And then we will properly be able to pass that on to our children. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم أدعو الله وأنتم مبتنون بالإجابة. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد. I want to talk about some of the benefits of lowering the gaze. We know, and there's no, we, none of us will dispute that there is an, uh, uh, you know, that this is something that we should be doing. Sometimes there's issues in terms of how we do it, and different people have different standards by which they follow. The Prophet ﷺ standard is very clear. But what's the benefit? What do we gain from that spiritually, and how does that impact our life? People say, well, well what's the big deal? I watch an, an hour of this show or that show on, on, you know, on Netflix or whatever I do, what's the big deal? It doesn't affect me. I still live my life, I'm still, alhamdulillah, practicing Muslim or whatever it is. There is some very clear benefits that we learn when we look into what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says. First of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after this ayah of lowering the gaze or in this ayah, ذَلِكَ azkalakum. That is purer for you. That is a way for you to maintain your purity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he put inside of us the quality of fitrah. All of us are born with goodness, a uh, pure nature. We want that which is good. But as we live in this world, we, we get corrupted in different ways and so on and so forth. But that pure nature is our true nature. And when you abstain and refrain from that which is not lawful, you go, you go back to that pure nature. ذَلِكَ أَزْكَالَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made purification and spiritual growth to be the outcome of lowering the gaze. 
we grow spiritually when we refrain from what we when we refrain in what we watch. And by the way, I'm I'm sitting and talking about this. Again, I'm reminding us all because some people may say in their mind, well, you know, what? I don't see that. I don't look at that stuff. And dear brothers and sisters, and I'm talking, to, you know, to to um, to even not only those who watch Hollywood but those who watch Bollywood, right? And as you all know, the the Bollywood industry has went completely corrupt. If you turn, if you look at any movie today versus any movie 20 years ago, the 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 content is so much worse. All you have to do is take one film from 20 years ago. And even when they did their dancing or whatever they did, women were even still decently. Now you look at it, it's a completely different story, right? So don't think, and we shouldn't fool ourselves and think that this does not affect us. Maybe it will not take us down the path of zina, but it will impede, it will stop our spiritual growth as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us. And you know, by the way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He tells us, He's telling us, don't look and don't show. Right? Don't look at that which is not supposed to be looked at and don't show from yourselves that which is not supposed to be shown. And that's why in the ayah that talks about women and lowering their gaze, it continues and talks about the parameters of Muslim women and how they, they are supposed to dress. And then, so that's number one, spiritual growth. Number two, halawatul iman, sweetness of faith. You will taste the sweetness of Iman when you protect what you let your eyes to see. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in the hadith that's related by Imam Ahmad, مَا مِن مُسْلِمٍ يَنظُرُوا إِلَى مَحَاسِنِ إِمْرَأَةٍ ثُمَّ يَغُضُّ بَصَرَ إِلَّا أَخْلَفَ اللَّهُ لَهُ عِبَادَةً يَجِدُ حَلَاوَتَهُ It's beautiful. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that there is no Muslim that when he looks at the beautiful aspects of the of a woman and then he turns away then he lowers his gaze then he lowers his gaze except that Allah will give him a worship in his worship that which where he finds sweetness when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you'll taste it you'll realize the benefit you'll see the benefit but if you allow all of that corruption inside you won't get the fruit even when you try even when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely you won't see that right so we have to stay away from the haram to taste the full sweetness of iman it doesn't come just by worshiping Allah and doing anything we want in this world that's not how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he set it up al imam al qurtubi he said something very important he said al basaru huwa al babu al akbaru ila ila al qalb he said that the your eyes eyesight is the biggest doorway to the heart. We have all of these different sensory functions, right? Touch, hearing, sight, taste. But that which connects quickest and has the biggest pathway to the heart is the eyes. Because there is so much that the eyes take in. Right? The images that we take in, they stay forever. They don't leave. When you, however if you engage in other sorts of haram action, if a person does, they drink alcohol, they use drugs, those things will leave the system if you stop. But visual images, they're, they're there in the brain, they don't leave, right? And that's why it is the most dangerous thing that if we allow our eyes to see whatever they want to see. Um, uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, he said that protecting your, the eyes is more difficult, is more severe than protecting the tongue. In other words, guarding your tongue. The, the, the eyes, the default is that they're open. Right? So you have to be more careful. The tongue, the default is that your mouth is closed. You have to open it to use it. But the eyes are open all the time, right? So it's even more guarded that we have to be in that regard, right? It's even a more of a conscious effort that we have to use. And the last thing, and we'll end on this, uh, brothers and sisters, the, one, the third benefit is that the heart will be illuminated and you will have spiritual insights 
that you will not have if you allow your eyes to see whatever they Nurul Qalb wa farasa right illumination of the heart look at Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam Sayyidina Yusuf he stayed away from that which he was not supposed to go towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what does he say kadhalika li nasrifa anhu as-su'a wal fahsha innahu min ibadina al-mukhlasin and thus we we kept away from him evil and sexual perversion because of what he did because of the fact that he ran away from it and we made him from our sincere servants right so so there is a, uh, um, uh, um, and look at the, the, the heights to which Sayyidina Yusuf salam climbed because he refrained and he resisted from, from that which was inappropriate. And what's very interesting, um, the Salaf, they say something beautiful. They say, مَنْ حَفِظَ بَصَرَهُ أَوْرَثَ اللَّهُ نُورًا فِي بَصِيرَتِهِ this is beautiful. Man hafidha basara awrath Allahu nuran fi basirati. The one that protects his eyesight, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala implants in his basira, in his spiritual insight, in his vision, he plants in it light. Right? So you, you allow only good to come in through your eyes and you will see the world in an illuminated fashion and you'll be able to walk in this world and know how to do and know what to, know what to say and know where to go and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be your guide in all of that. And then after these ayat about protecting the gaze or lowering the gaze in Surah An-Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu nur samawati wal ab which is beautiful. Very few ayahs after that protect your eyes from what they see and then, and then know that Allah is the ultimate light of the heavens and the earth. Um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us uh, understanding of the deen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us protection from that all that is not uh, uh, appropriate from us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength and the courage to do what's right at all times. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our eyes, our ears, and all of our sensory, all of our sensory, uh, sensory per perceptions from that which is haram. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach our kids what's right. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to be good examples for them. Inni da'in faqulu ameen. Allahumma gfir lil muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amat inna ka sami'un qareeb wa mujibu da'awat Allahumma a'izza al islam wal muslimin Allahumma arina al haqqa haqqan wa arzuqna al tiba'a wa arina al baatila baatila wa arzuqna al jtinaba Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al akhirati hasana wa qina a'zaab al nar Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu Ya inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallam وتسليما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين واقم الصلاه